Welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to a Song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. Recently we had an unofficial rules leak for a lot of the Free Folk and Night's Watch releases that are coming around the corner someday, eventually, and uh, I wanted to take an opportunity to dig into some of the uh, free folk stuff because I'm really excited for it. So we're going to look at Harma right now, and this is kind of like my hot take at how I would first want to try and build Harma and uh, what my thought process is behind why I've made the choices that I have. I've said in the past that the best place to start building a list or building with a specific commander in mind is with the tactics cards. I still believe that in general but with Harma we're gonna flip that a little bit because there's something very important with her her attachment version that we need to keep in mind when we're building this list so let's take a look at her first uh, she has an order superior flanking that triggers when a friendly unit within long range attacks an enemy in the flank or rear before the attack dice are rolled that attacker gets plus three attack dice and the defender becomes vulnerable so she just gets to uh, increase the output of a unit that happens to be in the flank and within long range of her so we're going to want Harma kind of uh, in the middle of the the business so to speak or at least in a part where she's actively trying to collapse a flank and move on to the next uh, the next area we want to try and trigger this as much as we can or at least as early as possible and make sure that we keep waterfalling that over the next part of her card is really important to why I wanted to start with her attachment first and that's Vanguard Commander. When you claim the uh, maneuver position on the tactics board you can return one commander tactics card from your discard pile to your hand and uh, be so what we get out of that is we want to try and build the list around getting as much use out of her tactics cards as we possibly can. Harma's got the ability to recycle a lot of great abilities that can kind of forward the idea, uh, or the not the idea, but more so like the game style that she's trying to put down. So now we can go into her tactics cards to see what that game is actually going to start looking like. Before I move on, though, I do want to hit uh, Harma's Bannerman real quick. So uh, Harma, in addition to being just a commander on her own, she can pay one extra point to bring her Bannerman with her, and uh, this will attach to the unit that she's in. And it comes with the Order Insight that triggers uh, when the unit makes a melee attack, but before dice are rolled, or attack dice are rolled, uh, the attack roll, or the attack rolls its highest uh die value and it gains vicious but then once the uh, attack is over the unit suffers d3 wounds so we'll have to keep that in mind when we're building whether we want the banner man to come with us or not uh, now that we have more options for points instead of just a very static uh, set of numbers that we had before this box came out and before the other releases that are with it are out um, we might be able to mess with the the one point level and just get a few extra attachments here and there so the banner man something to keep in mind because it is a pretty decent ability but taking d3 wounds a turn is kind of harsh for what you're getting out of this the first card we'll look at for harma is forced march this triggers at the start of a round and says one fr or one friendly unit may pivot and then make one free march action then it becomes weakened so this has a lot of interesting applications other than just the obvious of getting someone into charge range for your first turn so getting a f out of out of order out of activation march is nice for setting up some of these early charges or getting into side flanks especially when we look at trying to work with harma's uh um attachment card or her commander card um the other thing too is this can kind of set you up to where you you can put some units up a little bit further than what you would normally or what's advisable and then at the start of the round when your opponent's getting ready to say charge one of those units you can go ahead and hit forced march and just have them pivot completely back around and then march the other direction so you can uh, deny them that charge so a little bit of we're getting a little bit of a rob stark feel with that card but it's really 
a fantastic card, and I can see this coming back multiple times as one of your uh, prime choices for uh, Harma's ability that she has when she claims the uh, the maneuver zone. Um, the thing about the weakened token that we'll want to keep in mind is that free folk don't hit very accurately. A lot of them are looking at, you know, four pluses and then uh, three pluses not uh, widely available or it's available at a stipulation. So we might want to try and look at mitigating that a little bit with some of our unit choices as well. The next card we're going to look at is Diversion Tactics. Uh, this triggers when a friendly combat unit is attacked. Uh, one other friendly unit within long range of that unit may make a free maneuver action. If you control the maneuver position on the tactics board, instead you can pivot and make a free march action. This is another uh, example of how she's trying to utilize um, movement shenanigans to try and get into uh, juicy or precarious places. Um, this is really reminiscent of the horn that wakes the sleeper, but we've got um, the option or the ability to try and make this a free uh, march action instead of just a maneuver. So again, we're still trying to facilitate getting into those side flanks if we can. Uh, even the rear with some of these with being able to march as long as some of these units can. Um, so right now, after the two cards we've looked at, Harma really is looking at trying to abuse the movement portion of the game to try and pay dividends um, in... Uh, attacking from the flanks and rears, or getting into surprising places where your opponent wouldn't expect you to, like weird objectives you could grab or anything. There's there's limitless possibilities when it comes to uh, trying to abuse the table itself, which free folk can do v pretty well. Finally, we have faint Fainting Maneuver with uh, Harma. This could be probably my favorite card that uh, comes in her three, but this triggers when you claim the maneuver position uh, on the tactics board. Uh, replace the effect with one friendly combat unit can make a free charge action. If they're successful, you can place them in the closest flank arc of that defend or defender, uh, treating for all other purposes as though they had charged from the flank. So this will turn Harma's card on, and if you're playing against a, a savvy opponent, uh, that tries to mitigate some of your um, side flanking capabilities with all of the cards you have available to you. Uh, this is just a way to say, I'm going to get what I want anyways. You can grab the three dice and vulnerable if you have Harma close enough. Um, you can also use it to try and take out jamming units really early uh, if your opponent's not really... Uh, if you're not seeing any real opportunities to try and grab those flanks, uh, this one just makes sure that uh, Harma's army gets to do what Harmy wants it to do. Harmy? Did I say Harmy? <laughs> Harma's army gets to do what Harma wants it to do. Um, <laughs> so, uh, feigning maneuver is uh, another one that I could see coming up a lot in that the later parts of the game. Uh, the maneuver position is nice for getting your free retreat and everything, but you don't really need it for the movement. So just slamming down uh, one of your NCUs that isn't extremely necessary uh, to uh, grab a free charge out of nowhere is pretty nice. You can kind of simulate that um, overrun that comes with uh, Torment. Here's the list that I'm settling on for my initial build of Harma. Uh, I used uh, a Song of Ice and Fire Builder.com, and that's the abbreviation instead of the, the spelling of the, the words. But I've started off with uh, Harma in a unit of Spearwives. And the reason why I want her there is because they can, uh, they're, they're good if they get in on the flanks. They have a ton of attacks on the first and second, uh, or when they have full ranks and then are missing one rank. They also have a ranged weapon, even if it is short range. So Harma can get into the middle of the table, still influence things with her uh, order that, that uh, activates when someone is attacking on the flank. And uh, they're also just a, they're, they're a decent unit in general for uh, charging on the side too. Like they can put in work. Uh, they 
are a little bit more it's not that they're maneuverable it's just that they're um i don't know they're just a decent unit for harma to be in for this list's purposes if you uh try to pull back some of the other ones that are available for you you kind of uh get into this point of you have this commander who you want in the middle and doing a lot of things but sh the units that you can put her in aren't very survivable like regardless of which one you decide to put her in you're not looking at much better than a five plus save so sticking her in spear wives i think will be fine for now uh, it also means that i don't want to bring the banner with them because i don't want to be taking d3 hits to just get my uh consistent first and second rank attack value my both sevens uh and when i need the banner to do full or to swing with full dice I'm taking D3 afterwards, and that'll probably get close to wiping the unit. So I really wish they would have designed that to have uh, the Stark Fury-esque ability in there, where if you only have one rank, you don't take the D3 wounds, but uh, I can learn to move past it. The uh, first two units I added in after the Spearwives were the Cave Dweller Savages. Uh, the main reason for these, and I think... Um, if everything works out the way that I think it's going to, Cave Dweller Savages are going to be really important to the the Harma game plan. And the main reason being is that they're speed 6. So the Free Folk get their first speed 6 unit with the Cave Dweller Savages. I guess like the, the Free Folk Trappers are speed 6 as well, but they're really not doing a whole lot with that. But uh, when you get to Harma's cards where they can march and maneuver and charge, having 6 speed is really good for that. You can move your 12 inches and get into a flank pretty easily. So I plan on setting these up both on the sides of the table so that I can try and facilitate some of those flank charges a little bit more. Their attack stat is a little bit uh, shifty, but 7 dice for the first rank is pretty decent, and when you're starting to attack... Uh, wounded units or the units with one missing rank um getting sundering from the side is going to really take down a lot of hard armor or it's just going to ensure that our opponent isn't going to be saving much of their units after they uh end up taking a, a charge and maybe another hit from the cave dweller savages uh one could say that this wouldn't be a bad unit for harma but a six plus save is really not where i want to be sticking her and uh, they would basically just kind of sit in the middle and do nothing while she tried to uh, get her order to go off. I mean, you could play her aggressively too, but I want to try and influence as much of the table as possible because I don't know where I'm going to be getting my flank charges right away. Next up, I uh, am experimenting a little bit with the uh, Followers of Bone. Uh, they have a really decent attack stat, but it degrades quite quickly. Uh, the big ones from them are going to be they have the 4 plus save, which is one of the better ones that you can get for uh, free folk. Their morale is still middle of the road, but the uh, and the abilities don't really do a whole lot for me. Like hero uh, Horrific Visage is just not, it's not an ability that I value enough for 6 points on these guys. Um, in other lists with the other new commanders... I could see them getting a little bit more mileage out of that, but when I had first seen the Followers of Bone, I was really hoping for something like a three-plus save with this type of decline, with this type of really sporadic, like really hard declining attack stat. But I, I guess four-plus is about as elite as it gets for uh, free folk. Uh, I did stick a Champion of Bone in there because uh, if I can get the uh, panic tests, or if I can get my opponent to fail some of the panic tests, both from the one where I hit and then when they try to hit me back, uh, I can at least try and get some wounds back into that unit so I don't have to babysit it with the tactics board so much because I really don't want these guys losing any attack value. And they are going to spend most of their time in the center of the table to kind of put my opponent into a hard position where they have to either react to the two cave dweller savages that are coming up the side of the table or focus back their efforts into uh, the followers of the bone heading up the middle i can see that if that well i can see if this unit gets to be more of a hassle and not really uh, do anything 
for the Harma list. I could see pulling them out and putting uh, something else in with Jarl attached to them. Uh, I think Jarl is a really good inclusion for Harma's list. It'll allow me to uh, get some side charges that are unexpected or maybe even some rear ones if my opponent's trying to push a little bit further. Uh, it's just uh, right now I want to really see how these followers of Bone work outside of a list that can turn up some of the panic checks on them. The last bit of the combat units are going to be four units of Free Folk Raiders, and these really are just to jam my opponent up so that I can try and get the savages into places where they need to be if the tactics cards aren't quite doing it for me. Uh, also being able to turn on um, a lot of the uh, double engagement cards in the in the deck, are it's important for the Free Folk Raiders to be there in order to get that to happen uh, regularly and without spending a lot of points. The last couple things I have in here are just NCUs, and uh, I decide I'm not going very uh, groundbreaking here. I am taking Lady Val and Craster. They both are doing things that Harma wants, or at least this Harma list wants. Lady Val is going to let me get extra maneuvers when uh, that position might not be available to me, or just double down on it when uh, when it comes up. Craster will still allow me to get the uh, abilities that I might want from the tactics board if I don't need his, but there are some units in here that I would like to keep around, and I do want to try and dig into tactics almost all the time to try and get some more of those Harma cards to start recurring those. So having Craster in there to kind of do uh, both jobs is going to be another important piece to this. <clears throat> the new NCU, Ygret, um, I think that she is a very reactionary NCU, and at three points with not as much influencing things out right at this minute, I mean, I'm sure that the Night's Watch uh, hero box brings some, and uh, future boxes for other armies are going to bring some new influence cards too, but I'm not seeing a ton of reasons that as a Free Folk player I want to start stripping those. Um, so she kind of sits on the sidelines for right now, but I could see her making a, a really good place in a Craster list, uh, or not Craster list, a, a Mance Raider list, because he's a lot more like tinkery with the battlefield, and Ygret uh, really facilitates that. Uh, so in general, I think that this army should play in a fashion that's trying to get to the flanks as quickly as possible. I could see other iterations of this that are really just trying to jam a bunch of uh, Cave Dweller Savages with that high speed value uh, just to try and run all over the table and confuse your opponent and uh, really get into some hard flanks and start to utilize uh, that or the Harma order pretty well. Uh, I don't see myself doing something like running what I would consider the Mance Raider style list where you're bringing six or more units of Free Folk Raiders or you're trying to bring like you know anywhere from 12 to 10 activations in that list. I think that you can um, make Harma's tactics kind of work by happenstance with a list like that, but with this one we're taking a little bit more elite units in Free Folk terms and uh, gr trying to grab more abilities to try and break some more solid lists. Uh, being able to get on the flank is basically Sundering, but better because it's not Sundering. And then we've got a couple units in here that have Sundering kind of built into them so we can start to uh, peel apart some of those 3 plus armor saves. If you have any suggestions for a Harma list, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can also go on over to our Facebook page at Big Top Gaming and give that a like. Uh, you can keep up to speed with everything I'm doing, whether it's uh, hobby related or just throwing out some, some garbage memes or jokes. Um, also, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this and uh, hit the bell note the the bell icon uh, that'll note 
YouTube will notify you when I post a new video so you don't have to wait for uh, Facebook or myself to get around to telling you. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to making the next one for you.